The people who are so lazy, you know, they're not going to leave the warmth of their homes to come out here tonight. You're one of the few dedicated people I know that's, that's out here. This is Scud, right? He's uh, one of the original occupiers. I've been kind of like on an extended leave for a while. So yeah, I was taking a break. Yeah, that's okay. I took a break. We all need to have some time, you know, down. So that's all good. I know I made sure I wore long underwear tonight, folks. You know, because I grew up on the East Coast. Our hot dogs are better than your wieners! And then we have the lovely Sarah, who you can't see in the darkness. She's out here uh, eating up our wiener for us. <laughs> hey, what's a protest without a little bit of humor, right? Let's keep it on the <laughs> yeah, I should have brought a light, but I wasn't thinking. Thank God. Yeah, I got one of those. Uh, I got one of those LED jobs too. Yeah, they really work. We, we, we work well in the dark. you, but I feel an urge to medicate. Uh, uh, that's like what kind of kids eat armor hot dogs? Fat kids, skinny kids, kids with chicken pox, tough kids, wimpy kids, even kids that like to rock. We like hot dogs. We hate wiener. The kind of dogs we like to bite. Armor hot dogs. Oh, sorry about the shaky camera. Got a lot of wonderful people out here today. Oh yeah, we're live streaming right now. Oh no no. no my name's Freeman Sullivan. For those of you that don't know me or just tuning in, you want to find out all about me? Just Google me, Freeman Sullivan, and you'll find links to all kinds of wonderful stuff that I'm doing these days. And, uh, you know, I'm not hiding from the NSA or anybody else. Uh, I'd just like to take some time out to let our viewership know that NSA has been hacked. Their servers have been broken into and compromised. All their data is getting wiped right now as we speak. So NSA, if you're out there watching, which we know you constantly are, a big fuck you, right? Poor NSA because that way it's better than getting fried. Yeah. So we let the NSA know they're a bunch of assholes. And thank you for, for sifting through our private lives. And we really don't appreciate it. And uh, Anonymous... I wish I had a private life. Yeah, well, me too. That's why I live stream. This is my private life. <laughs> right. I like everybody to see all the dirty, nasty details. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Alright, uh, uh, excuse me viewers, uh, I'm going to take a second here, and uh, i got to medicate. So just a second, please stand by, I like that term, please stand by. Uh, here we go, medication. My life giving medication. Medical cannabis. That's one thing we do have here in San Francisco. Medical cannabis. This is the birthplace of medical cannabis. You know, for all those of you who don't know, that cannabis actually cures cancer. So when a doc tells you you're going to die from cancer, you tell them, no, I'm not. Because I like to use my medical cannabis on a daily basis. So. Damn straight, that's why I'm alive. I'd be dead without it. You know, when you got your doctor handing you cannabis oil capsules, that's when you know you're on the right track, right? Oh, he doesn't charge me for the cannabis. But, and if you know me with cannabis, I generally. Yeah, he takes his life too. Yeah, well, I'm going to get, get out of the wind here for just a second. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to park here for a second. Okay, love, well, you don't got to run. I'm not poisoned. 
I don't bite either. Ooh. Yeah, folks, the hawk is out tonight. Let me load up my pipe here. Sorry for the shaky camera. Wind is howling at about 25 miles an hour. But I'm an Eagle Scout, so. By the way, we don't we don't hate the other people that live in this building. Uh, we don't even really hate Scott Wiener, but we do want to let them know that we're not down with this policy. You know, and I might come off with some vitriol, but uh, I don't really hate anybody. Not permanently, anybody. I, I, I don't hate the person, I hate the act. So just consider where it's coming from. It's coming from the heart. No bullshit here. Oh, Lord, let me get myself fixed up here. You know, it's not freezing, but I bet you if you got just a little bit wet tonight, oh, yeah. that you would die of hypothermia. Probably, yes. If it started raining, we'd all be so well. That's right. Well, that you might be, but you. Yeah, no, I got the trench on. I grew up on the East Coast, man. I grew up in the Midwest, but still, I don't. Yeah, well, you're aware of you're, you're California now, California, right? That's just easy. Let's see if I can get some people to come up to the light here, because uh, you know, uh, live streaming shadows is not the best way of our time. Oh, I wish I was not a Scott Wiener. He is what I truly don't want to be. Excuse me. Uh, we're not. We're not blocking your access, sir. Criminalization. There we go. I'm slightly out of the wind, so at least you guys out there that are watching should be able to hear. You know, amazingly enough. Most San Franciscans used to be able to afford a place in this neighborhood. Uh, the average rent out here now is about three grand for a one-bedroom apartment. Uh, so the rest of America, uh, just so you know, that it is super high price to live here in San Francisco, and that even most normal people make a normal salary are having a hard time making ends meet. Right? You know, we got cops. Those cops that are sitting across the street. They make a six-figure salary, right? And even they, San Francisco, they all live up in Nevada, which is a little bedroom community about 40 miles north of here. North of here. So in case you don't know the Bay Area. Well, we're going to be out here for at least another hour. So tell your friends. And if you're in the area at 4096 17th Street, which is one block east or west of Castro Station, excuse me, uh, show up. And show some support and show some love for your houseless brothers and sisters. Hey, oh, by the way, um, yeah, I'm sorry, but, you know, Vlad is coming to town in a couple of weeks. He's worth it. Right? Vlad's coming to town next week. He's like Santa Claus. He's Santa Claus for live streamers. Which, if uh, you're out there watching and you're a dedicated live streamer and you're having problems with equipment, you need a broadband connection, uh, I'm going to refer you to Vlad Tetchberg of GlobalRevolution.tv. Um, he's really easy to, to get a hold of. Uh, just tweet him at GlobalRev Live. That's G L O B A L Live on Twitter, and he's real simple to get a hold of. <laughs> You know, it's, you know, we never see the homeless people, isn't it? Uh-oh. Adrian's out there with her camera. Yeah, 
Yeah, he lives in one of these stucco, stucco joints, right? This building uh, looks like it was constructed around early 1960s. So I can remember, uh, if you need some food, uh, just hook yourself up there, brother. There should be some there. Hopefully, it hasn't been all gobbled up yet. Yeah, they're all good, man. We don't buy cheap dogs around here. Which, uh, for those of you watching, uh, uh, technically I'm like against hot dogs even. Uh, you know, if you want to... You want something that's really bad for you, eat a hot dog, and they got this cancer-causing agent, all of them, called sodium nitrate, and uh, somebody like me that gives me migraines is really bad, so I don't eat anything with sodium nitrate in it. It's a little dark out here. God, everybody's scared of me. Good Lord. You know what I mean, dude? I always, I always find the most comfortable spot. That's what Eagle Stretch eating tape here. I don't have to work tonight, so yeah, I can, I can consume the tape. Parts are from people, not from corporations! Like the spot here. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Get out of the Eagle Scout. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that was a gift from yesterday. Thank you, well. We go across here. I got one. So are we going to now police the parks from midnight to 5 a.m.? How many resources, how much money does it cost to put cops to walk in the parks from midnight to 5, as opposed to helping some of these 6,400 plus homeless in San Francisco have a place to sleep? Right. Yeah, the numbers are 15,000 homeless people, 36,000 empty units. So we have enough housing to fit the people, and instead we're spending our resources to police them. And then we're billing them. We're billing them $187, $100. day, yeah. For what? And how are they ever going to pay it? Just racking up more debt? No, they don't. They're not going to. They're not and going to. the taxpayers pay for all that stuff. They right. pay for the patrols. They pay for the fences and the signs. That's right. And, and these police. Yes. And these police. And the processing and the criminalization. And that's where, where is the profit? It's in the privatized prisons. So what are we going to do? Move the homeless into the prisons? Oh, they are doing This is the real life matrix. And then put them in the shoe. Don't get in a, in a fight. They'll end up in the shoe. There we go. That's where we, we deinstitutionalize the mental hospitals so that we can create privatized prison shoes and put them in there instead. Yep. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. So what are we really going to do about that? That's not going to That's not going to happen in San Francisco. We can't let this happen. Not in our city. Take care of uh, not, not here. Let's see what happens when this comes, you know, into the Board of Supervisors. See if any of the supervisors have any political will or any complaints. When this, when this comes for a vote. I mean, there was one dissenter, I think it was Jane Kim, who voted no on this. And I think the, the wiener voted to do it. Well, the wiener proposed. Oh, Mr. Mueller would make a better supervisor.
supervisor wiener. <laughs> and this is ridiculous. Yeah, we, we all know he's in the pocket of the realtors. What have we right. got? What do we got, Mona Lisa? We got how many cops cars do you see over there? Plenty. Yeah, exactly how much Popo is out here. And we're so violent. Right. We're so rowdy. There's, you know, they like to pretend that they're all tough, right? But do you see any one of them standing out? Right side, you know, well, they're not idiots. They're all getting but, You know, it's just like Occupy, right? They were standing there and they had their little hand warmers. You know, I don't know if you guys remember that, you know, but uh, they kept telling us it's illegal to have an open flame outside, right? Yet they're standing there with a, with a butane powered hand warmer, right? So, such is the hypocrites, the hypocrite crits of the SFPD. Some more bad wiener laws. Yeah, yeah, let's talk let's about talk bad wiener. Bad wiener, no hot dog. Exemption. All right, well, let's bring you over to the light here. Farm. Come back to the light. You got it for you. Come on. There you go. See, because we got people that want to see your lovely face out here. All right. All right, Mona Lisa, here you go. Turn, come here. Don't be shy. All right, all right. All right, there you go. You want to talk about Hayes Valley Farm? Yeah, let's talk about Hayes Valley Farm. Let's talk Farm. about Hayes Valley Farm. What did they say? Like 20,000 tons or some ridiculous amount of food or 5,000. I can't remember. What was it? The, the, the numbers of that? Just huge amounts of food that went to the free farm stand distributed to people. Local, organic food. Thousands of volunteers who came through over the course of five years. The real gem in the, in the heart of our city, a living, functioning farm. And that, that farm um, was built on land that used to be waste. It used to just be concrete and mess. That was off and the people, the people built a beautiful, functional farm. And the wildlife came. There were nests in the trees. There were hummingbirds. There was so much wildlife. But, you know, they, they never had to do an environmental impact report, despite all that wildlife and all the bees and the hummingbirds. They never had to do an environmental impact report because they got an exemption. Because back five, six years ago, when it was just wasteland, you don't need to do environmental impact report on the parking lot. So all these years later, it's time to raise the property and put up more condos. And the people who were occupying that property to try to save it filed a complaint with the Board of Supervisors and said, where's the environmental impact report? We got birds in the trees here. What about the Federal Migratory Bird Act? What about CEQA? Let's take a look at what's here. Let's look at the environment. Isn't that what all these laws are for? To like demand an environmental impact report before you go knocking down trees? And uh, Scott Wiener's other uh, legislation basically says you've got 30 days from the time of an exemption to complain. So that 30 days passed years ago, retroactively with this new law that just passed this summer. I don't know. Wiener's laws and how they affect San Francisco. So what's he getting? Uh, what's he coming up for like election? It so far. I don't know. Uh, not anybody soon know? Not soon 2015? Is it, is it a two year term? Yeah, it's a four year term, but they thanks her about it. I like to say she's camera shy, but she's a natural for the camera. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Yeah. Good lord, hello. I'll have to have a talk with her later. <laughs> Boost her confidence. You know, I'm not afraid to go on camera, but people don't want to see my ugly face. Actually, I'm just joking. I know I'm a hard. Vegetarian. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I, I actually had something before I came up here. Thank you, dear. You're so thoughtful. That's what we love about you, Adrian. You're very thoughtful. Right? You do all the you do all the little things that everybody else is too lazy to do, right? Like keeping track of the meetings. By the way, if you're uh, if you're in San Fran and you want. To Limits. Yeah, yeah, we know. But if you're in San Fran, uh, we do recommend that you come by to the Action Council meetings at 529 Golden Gate Avenue. And those meetings are every Sunday from 2 until 4. And you get to meet quality people like Bob and Adrian and Mona Lisa and the rest of these beautiful folks out here. They're out here struggling for freedom 
and justice in what's often a cruel and an insane system. So uh, do join us on Sundays from two to four. You know, I'm sorry I missed today's meeting, but uh, you know I can. I'm good for like one activity a day, so I have to make my choices wisely. But uh, and I forgot to tell everybody that uh, Vlad Teshberg of GlobalRevolution.tv. Uh, as I invited him to come out here, he'll be here from November 6th till November 12th, and uh, he's going to be out here. He is the uh, premier live streamer on the planet, right? I'll even I'll even give him mad props. Um, is he out of New York? Yeah, New York, but he's uh, spends most of his time in Spain and Turkey, and he's out there. He's put over 300 live streamers out into the world, and uh, if you need equipment, you need a hotspot, you need technical advice. He's the man to know, and uh, so we're gonna. You know, I invited him to come out here and uh, do a little teaching of uh, people here in San Francisco. Uh, he was chief technician for Occupy Wall Street in New York, and I went there for the first anniversary. And I have to say that his planning resulted in a minimal amount of people getting arrested. So, despite the fact that the New York cops were hot on our ass all the whole time, we were his name again? Vlad Teshberg. Yeah, he's a real dynamic guy. Like, like he's just like exploding with information every time you see him, right? So, uh, you know, we need him out here on the West Coast. I need a, basically, I need a little help. Master streamer. The master streamer. The master streamer. <laughs> right, he'd, he'd be the man. All right, I thought that was a popo. You know, these days, all cars look alike to me. Right, I have a hard time telling the difference between a BMW and a... Yeah, I, I, yeah that's really true. I and they're all silver black or white now. I don't know if you know this, but yeah. They don't make cars and colors anymore, right? That just shows you where our planet is headed, right? What these corporate assholes are doing to our world. It's taking all the color out of it, you know? Because they want everything, you know, sanitized. And, you know, when you live in a society that's systematically poisoning the population, right? And, you know, I'm not a paranoid and I'm not really into conspiracy theories, but... You know, the very people that control societies are the ones that are putting, like, corn syrup solids in our foods, right? It makes you wonder if they're actually trying to depopulate the planet or not, you know? Uh, they're the ones that are, uh, you know, Bill Gates has uh, donated multi-millions to a vaccination campaign in Africa. And uh, it's been found that a lot of the vaccines actually contain the agents that, were, uh, that make these diseases possible. Um, I know for a fact that uh, uh, they were trying to develop a vaccine for cancer, and that's how they came up with the AIDS virus. It was quite, it was come upon quite accidentally at the CDC in Atlanta. And uh, they're trying to blame it on monkeys in Africa. They're saying that's where it comes from. But maybe the species, maybe the apes that they were experimenting on at the time came from Africa, but not the, not the disease itself. And then they spread it back to Africa because it, was, it makes uh, perfect sense that the one percent would like to depopulate Africa because it is the second most populous uh, place on the planet, and uh, there's all that gold and diamonds and uranium and a lot of other yeah, and all the little goodies that the one percent would like to rip off from the poor people in Africa, which we already know if you've ever been to Africa is just it's horrifying in some places. The people are really nice there. And my, my visits, I've been to uh, Egypt, and I've been to South Africa, and I was treated really well in both places. I'd love to go back to Egypt again. And uh, you know, lest we forget, Egypt is in Africa, yeah. and it is an African nation. Uh, the same with Libya and Algeria, you know, so, uh, and I, you know, our brothers in Nigeria, which I am picking up live streams from brothers in Nigeria. Right, and it's also kind of cool to listen to them speak because they have this wonderful accent of English. It just sounds so cool, yeah. right? You know, they speak English better than most Americans. Oh, Sad no, to I say. To oh, okay. So yeah, for those of you who just joined in, which I see the viewer numbers going up, uh, we're out here at the, uh, 4096 17th Street here in Chile, San Francisco, uh, in the Castro District. We're out here in front of Scott Wiener's pad. His little, uh, his little bachelor pad, I guess. Right? I've actually seen him a lot walking downtown. Right? I've actually confronted him a few times about his stupid policies. 
And uh, what he does basically is the same thing that most people do to the homeless, is they try to ignore you and pretend you don't exist. Right. So uh, that's where he's at. I'm much colder than you are. Basically, I believe that he's using homeless people as a political tool because he knows that homeless people are incapable of fighting back and they're the easiest political prey on the map. And it's really easy to pass a bunch of laws criminalizing homelessness is because, I mean, you know, come on, who wants somebody sleeping on their doorstep? You know, I mean, I, you know, I had one guy sleeping on my doorstep and I did my best to be compassionate. And then finally I'd had enough because he, you know, he was camping out there all day long. And this was a business I was operating, you know, and I had to like have, you know, have access in and out. And uh, I finally asked the hot team to come and pick him up. You know, we do have a homeless outreach team here in San Francisco. And uh, he reciprocated my helping him because he did get a warm place to stay, whether, you know, that uh, his reciprocation was to pee through the little hole that my mail slot in the door. So I had this big puddle of urine I had to clean up. Right, nice guy, huh? So, you know, that's what we have to deal with. You know, and it's small wonder why people get upset with homeless people. You know, but you gotta remember, folks, you know, homeless people don't have a bathroom they can use. You know, all the things that you take for granted in life, you know, like being able to brush your teeth and comb your hair and change your underwear and take a shower and have a warm bed, well, those people have been deprived of all those things, right? And, you know, it's only natural that your behavior changes and you're forced to deal with the privation of this magnitude. So, uh, you take it from somebody who's lived out in the wild on the streets. Um, but, uh, you know, I was a little different, you know, uh, because I knew what to expect. And uh, I was actually quite adept at living out in the wild. And, uh, you know, I actually learned how to get along with all the little wild things that live out there that you would never know that are there, right? Unless you actually lived amongst them, like the Canadian geese and the beavers and the wharf rats and all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of wildlife out there. And, you know, if you think that we're criminalizing and torturing people, uh, you can only imagine what we're doing all to all the wild creatures that are out there and how we're just absolutely destroying their habitat, you know, quite legally. And quite, most people do it and they don't even know what the fuck they're doing, right? And I've actually had to sit out there and defend like a flock of wild geese from getting bulldozed over by construction people that, you know, they were just doing their job, right? You know, don't ever give me that fucking excuse. You're just doing your job. Because it didn't wash in Nuremberg and it ain't gonna wash now. All right, I gotta see one of our officers is coming out here. Just wanna go over here and see what he has to say. Oh, he's just wondering how long we're gonna be here. Not long, officer, it's cold out here. We just out here to make a point. Oh, we got some action. Let's see what's up. How are you doing tonight, officer? I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, not too bad. We're just out here. We want to let the people watching to know what's up. And we're not going to be out here much longer. It's yeah. cold out here, man. Cold? But yeah, it's freezing out here. You're sitting in the car there. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Okay. <laughs> Born and raised in the city. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're just out here. We're protesting uh, for their criminalization of the homelessness. Uh, the leader wants to have a legislation to close the parks at midnight. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's trying to do. And we know that you guys have a hard enough job as it is. Right. And you don't need any extra laws that you have to sit there and enforce. So, uh, you know, we're on your side as well. Right. So. <laughs> Hot dog does sound good, but I do have dinner with you. Yeah, probably the San Francisco police officers. They're not all bad. <laughs> I just do a lot of demonstrations, so I only see the bad side most of the time. Yeah. You know. But, yeah. but you guys pulled my butt out of the fire a couple of times. Yeah? So. Yeah, when I was getting assaulted during my live stream and stuff, so. Uh, <laughs> so I appreciate it. Uh, we got much love for our, for our San Francisco police officers tonight. They are being very, uh, very nice. Which is no, no. Well, no, you're the best bet if we were, you know, if this was an assault, we were actually going to hang Scott Weiner. We haven't broken into the building, which is probably what we really should be doing. But don't we'll let it go with that. <laughs> I'm going to challenge Scott Weiner. <laughs> hey, Scott Weiner, if you're out there watching. If you're listening, as I challenge you, that if I'll let's let's have a sleep out 
on the steps of City Hall, right, for a couple of nights. That's nice. And we'll see how long you last. And I'll match you, match you hour for hour. You hear that, Scott? That's a challenge, right? You know, one thing I think I have over you is that I have spent some time on these cold streets, so I do know how to take care of myself. So I don't think he does. I don't think he really knows. A lot of times these people pass all these laws, and they really don't know what it's like to, to, to be poor. You know, we got a whole Congress, oh, whole Congress people, well, rich that's motherfuckers. Exactly, that's how human hierarchies work. Yeah. You know, we got Diane Feinstein, like she's next for the doorstep treatment again, right? Uh, she's trying to pass a law that uh, makes it against the law to disclose any NSA information. And get this, this is the this is the clicker. Why, why are we not right? surprised? If that's not bad enough. She wants to have you tried in a secret NSA court, right? That's where Diane Feinstein's headed. That's where she's, she always was. Yeah, she's headed down that I mean, path I, of civility. I signed the petition to get her recalled here long before it was even fashionable. Right. Back when, and then voted. Man, you know, I hate voting. I had to vote for her once since then when she ran against that. Um, uh, oh, yeah, what's his name down there? The yeah, I know that. Huffington guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had to, and it was it just made me sick to my stomach. Yeah, well, I, I don't. I just don't vote anymore on these things, any of them, because I think they're all part of the same corporate so right. yeah. Oh, no doubt. No doubt, I mean, you know. She's, look at, she's doing this. He, Obama, uh, you know, the god of all the 40-something. Well, that's British. why we make our decisions by consensus and not by majority. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we so we don't have that voting how much money crap to put up with, you know, the winner-take-all system. Right? You know, I thought, if our government was run by consensus, trust me, you get laws that are, you have a society that's much fairer because then everybody you get to, you know, get to participate. I think you do with 300 million people. Well, you just break it down, <laughs> right? It's going to be really hard. Well, you break it down. I'm in favor of getting rid of big countries of 300 million people, personally. But uh, <laughs> no doubt. I think it will happen at its own time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> They're a blip in the, like, uh, the history. I don't blame her. But. Anyway, Feinstein is like not my cup of tea. Hell no. What's your name, sir? Dennis. Oh, uh, nice to meet you, sir. Glad you came out tonight. Are you? I'm on your list. I hope I never see another hot dog as long as I live. <laughs> yeah, I'm not real big on dogs. The only dogs I like were the ones I got in New York. Oh, right, because well, they got a. Or Chicago. Yeah, they got a hot dog vendor on all every corner in Manhattan. Can't live up to that. <laughs> and any food you this, buy on the street here. Like, this was like the, the 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 forty cheapest hot dogs you ever. I bought the best ones. I bought a pack of premium dogs. It probably didn't get put on. Oh well. <laughs> Go ahead and keep them. Yeah. I'm not know, somebody either. will be happy to take those home. The shit that I bought, no one's gonna want. So I figure we better eat it. Oh, definitely. It's like you're cooking. <laughs> As it this were. This is wonderful. This is fun. Yeah, yeah it as it were. Yeah. It's about as close to cooking as I can. I know, and the police are being ultra nice. And yeah. It's a good thing, you know. Yeah. I don't know how much longer I'm going to spend out here. It's, yeah, I know. I, I feel that way too, what? but I, I see where the wind is. This is what I wanted to ask because I feel like if they had just left us be, we would have left. Yeah, but now they're going to challenge us. We have to stay longer. Well, you know, um, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm betting that their commander asked them uh, yeah, right. to get an answer. No, right. no, I, I don't think this is going to break just up. Just keep in mind, there, there is a chain of command in a police department, just like the military. Of course. Right. And they always they always say, That was a meal oh, with my supervisor. And they always, yeah. Well, That's why when you have a problem, the first right. thing you do is to speak to the watch commander. Right, a little... A little rule for you uh, people out there that are watching that want to learn how to deal with the police is that you have a problem with a police officer, don't deal with him directly. Ask to uh, either ask to see the watch commander or the sergeant in charge of the detail, and that's the way it works in the police department. So a little tipster, a little tipster for the hipsters that want to be out there protesting. Take it from a 40-year veteran, which I've been doing this for 40 years. Not just live streaming, of course not, but you know, demonstrating. Yeah. Shut down the intercom at my elementary school in 1971 <laughs> in protest over the killings at Kent State. That was my very. You were in elementary school. That's your. I graduated from high school in 1970. Uh, that was the year of the. It was May of 70. Yeah, no, yeah. 71. Kent, uh, Kent State was 71. It was May of 70. Well, okay, then I was. Because in, I was because there. I went. We went up to. 
four of us, I, I'm from Iowa, we were going to Iowa State to see the campus and the, the counselor took us there uh, from our high school and it was May of 70 when we were graduating and or we went up in April, I guess it was May, May, beginning of May, yeah, and we went up to Iowa State right and then it just happened that day. So the campus was closed so we got to sit and listen to Auntie Ward speeches the whole time we were there instead of go around and see much of the campus. So I, I bet you it was 70 just because of that because I know I graduated in 70. So. Okay. I believe you. Yeah. And by the way, there's no debate on it anyways. <laughs> right? We're all both on the same side. Oh, it's not, it's not that. It's just a, I know. I always hear it when I... You're just a kid. You're in grade school. What do you know? Uh, <laughs> I knew a lot at that time, believe me. I knew enough to know how to shut the intercom system down at my school. You know, I was one of those AV nerds. Yeah. I'm still an AV nerd. You know, 40 years later, I'm still out here with a camera. <laughs> I got one with me that I still can't with. Uh, well, you know, I actually believe that most of the work behind live streaming is, is maintaining your social networks. So people, you actually, people will know to come and watch, right? So that's the way you get, you know, the way you uh, get things going. And I really hate it when I get into petty arguments with people and and, and sometimes that things get overblown on the internet so quickly, yeah. you know, that we have to like kind of watch our, our conduct and that we don't always mean the things that we say when we say them at the time. And uh, so we'll just let it go at that. I pretty much concluded that I don't think, in the bigger sphere of picture, that all the digital stuff is that good for us as a species. I just don't. Yeah, we're supposed to be on the same side, you know. We're, we're struggling against all the alien races that are coming here to try and con. You know, yeah, they right? we, never, <laughs> we make deals with them and, and sell out right away and go, I'll eat him if you'll like. Let me live. <laughs> I'm afraid there's enough people that would do that. I. I <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know. Okay, I'm going to give people a little bit of idea how cold it is out here tonight. Um, it's 40, it's 50, 45, 50 degrees out here, which is generally, you know, you can. It's not too bad if the wind's not blowing, but the wind's blowing at about what 25, 30 miles an hour. Sometimes it seems like 50. But and yeah. then, <laughs> and then not even that. On top of that, we're not talking about just wind. We're talking about wind Blustery. that's laden with heavy moisture. Yes. I can feel the drops on me right now. So, uh, you know, Supervisor Wiener, unless you're willing to give people a place to stay, uh, why do you want to kick people out of the parks? You know, uh, by and large, these people aren't really hurting anybody, by and large. You know, there was the guy that was cutting down the trees in, in Golden Gate Park. Okay, we agree, you know, that guy took it a little too far. You know, and there are some people that do want to press the issue. But by and large, most of these people were homeless, and they just needed a place where they could get some rest. You know, and then the next thing you know, just, you know, it's torture, basically. By the by Geneva Convention standards, this law is torturing the homeless. It's another example of torturing people. When you don't let them sleep, you're torturing people, right? They use that torture. They used it at the Lubyanka in Soviet Union. They used it in South Africa. They used it at Guantanamo Bay. This is fucking torture, people. Plain and simple. When you deny the person a right to sleep, you are torturing them. So uh, that's the words I have for Scott Wiener. Are you recording yourself? Oh yeah, this is going out live. Right? Not only are we re recording it. I would, I would have moderated my talk. Oh no, I. Everybody knows who watches my live stream that I don't pull any punches. Right? I say it like it is. What's your name? You know, my name's Clark, and uh, my brand, my. My username is Freeman Sullivan, right? So if you hook up on any, I'm on the page. yeah. So you find me on Facebook, Clark Sullivan, or uh, you can find me everywhere else. Just uh, Google Freeman Sullivan, and I have accounts at all the major like places under that name. Uh, it was you know it's a little long, but I chose it in 1994. And I'm Dolly, and I always have. Like, even the trolls can't keep up with me. <coughs> I don't know how much longer we're going to make it out here. Uh, possibly another half an hour, folks. Because it is. Oh, 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 oh. And, uh, you know, if I was homeless, I'd be. Uh, I'd actually have a tent out here. But you can see the moisture flying through the air. So not only is it windy, but it's kind of like a thing out here. I'm going to move back a little bit. Out of this wind. Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right. Now, if you're smart, 
right? And you know, most people, you know, they're like they're like uh, they're like turkeys, right? They don't even know how to get out of the rain, you know, because turkey can drown. Like if you don't, like I don't know if you've ever raised turkeys, but uh, if you don't bring them inside when it's raining, they'll drown. Yeah, I know that. Right? Well, people are a lot like that too. Uh, living in San Francisco, like if you really want to stay warm, you always go on the western or the, the eastern side of a building, right? If you go on the eastern side of the building, uh, the temperature is usually 5 to 10 degrees warmer. A little tip for you homeless folks out there, go on the eastern side of a building and you will stay warmer. And uh, uh, that also helps. So when you get up in the morning, you can stay warm because the sun comes up. And I know they're not bad where you walk up. Now, most people don't know that. They teach you that in Eagle Scout. Well, I like how they do the lobby all nice and plain and nondescript. I guess we could look. Yeah, I wonder if we. Hey, is anybody ragging bell yet? Living in an SRO. I live in an SRO, right? I know, imagine. But, it, but it's a roof over my head. I, I can't complain, it's a roof over my head, so I'm happy. Yeah, I'm glad to hear you say that. <laughs> well, it's true, it's, it's, it is a roof. I'm, I'm you know never had an apartment in Oakland, and I had to lose it because my job at the time cut my hours back, and it was easy. They were going to get ready to evict me, so I'm just like, I'll leave. So. I'll leave. And you guys can rent out something you can afford the old one. I came to the city and realized, in San Francisco, I'm not going to be able to live in one of these nice apartments. So I checked the SRO distance, called the one where I'm at right now. Beautiful place up on the second floor. I can't complain. I remember when you could rent one of those for like $300. I heard it was a little cheaper. I pay about 800 because I live in the same apartments. I'd be careful. I know. I'm a disability too. I at least have a little bit of money. My landlady, it's only an eight. It's eight units. It's kind of a weird shape and size. So far, it hasn't. Like we don't want our landlords so to go broke either. Good. I can't you know, She's although I, go broke. I, I personally feel that the landlord class is a parasitic class. And that's one of the things that the uh, when they were in China, that was the first thing they did. That was their first official act was to uh, evict all the landlords. Of course, they they executed most of them, which uh, I don't agree with that. And they know this. Uh, yeah. No, killing people is not right. That's why I'm not real. I'm not big with commies because they don't like to. They don't like to act on violence. You know, we're trying to create a new paradigm for human behavior. You know, we're not just trying to change the political system. You know, we're trying to change human behavior. And uh, the only way you're going to start, you know, waking people up and uh, waking up some consciousness. So is by teaching yeah, people to be nonviolent, because nonviolence is much more effective as a political so philosophy. Well, you know, and I hear that. I took an oath of nonviolence. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I needed to take an oath, but I just did it as a. As it was really important to me at the time, um, having engaged in in violence. You know, I I went from a, a pistol packing asshole to being a nonviolent kind of a dude. And I was living in Texas at the time, so. And people yeah, do yeah, carry guns. I've been the kind of person that always stands up for bullies. Even when I was, even when I was coming up, I was never afraid to get my butt kicked. Was that intercom? Oh yeah. Well, people know if they fuck with me, that you know, like, like I will hack into their their computers. So they can't. Oh, somebody's watching us from up there. Well, you know, I'm gonna pull you back. It was good to meet you. Take care and good luck to us. Good luck to us. That's what I think. Good luck to us all. My, my, what's the opposite of agree? Send away. Salutation. No, no, don't let your ass hit you on the way out. Don't, don't, let, don't let your ass hit the door on your way out. Yeah, well, <laughs> that kind of thing. Like, yeah. Just teasing. <coughs> I love to tease people. It's one of my favorite things in the world. All right, you have a good night there. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Which is a big problem here in San Francisco. Amongst the homeless, our bed bugs. <laughs> My little, that little demonstration that we had, uh -huh. we whipped ass, dude. Good, I'm sorry, I missed that one. <laughs> yeah, the one by your hotel, I missed that one. I'm sorry. Yeah, Randy Shaw is my bitch now. 
I still have a copy. I'm still reading his book, the second edition of his book, Acting yeah. in his Handbook. So I've been told by. Uh, He's a big phony. Yeah, I've been told by you, and I've also been told by. Uh, Lorraine, Lorraine, who's out oh, every morning talking. I've been told by her to read, read that with a uh, read, read that. I've been mean, told read that book with a great, big major grain of salt. Yeah. But I cannot yeah. remember. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, see, I don't buy the cheap stuff. Roll it yeah, yeah. yeah bring some buns with you too, brother. Uh, I said they taste better with buns. Yeah, we know you guys are rubbing it. It's not even that, it's just not 20 after, it's still early. Oh yeah, well, you know, it's oh, yeah. that, I, um, I thought today was daylight savings time, so I stayed up last night till 3. And I think it's, uh, <laughs> like an idiot. And another week or so. Yeah, next week. Like yeah, next week, yeah. I hate daylight savings time anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally what can it be like the Nevada, 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 Nevada and, uh... So it'll get dark at like 5.30, 5, you know. It kind of sucks, actually. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and what does it do? It doesn't really do anything. It's getting cold and early. Yeah, it's chilly out now. Well, we're in weird weather. Hold on a second, folks. Mobile up one of So Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, you want to give about it and another action or something so we can think of ideas? I would love to. Did you hear that the NSA um, website got... Yeah, it's good. Yeah, they need to do that more. Show them that. You're not the only folks with that capability. There's folks out there that know what to do. Mike? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I love it. Don't run away from me. Yeah, there we I, go. I, I, somebody I'll be in touch. To me okay. after when he walks uh, that was our lovely co host. And I don't know if they're so happy that she showed up, Mona Lisa Wallace. Oh, yeah, uh, she's a great gal. Lisa. Right? Glad she came tonight. Yeah. You know, it's nice to have uh, a little beauty at our demonstrations. We always got too many dudes. Uh, well, we're going to we're gonna sign off here in a minute because it looks like we're breaking up. But, uh, all in all, it was a fairly successful folks. As you can tell, my camera is getting blown around. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, next broadcast uh, is going to be tomorrow night. Hey, uh, you want to go down to the Bradley Manning benefit? Uh, there's a Bradley Manning benefit at the uh, at the Terrence Hall. Is that tomorrow? That's tonight. Oh, tonight? Yeah, yeah butterfly. I get, I get it. Yeah. yeah well, they're also yeah. asking, like, and I'm a little short sure okay. what they want. Ten to five if you're in uniform, five if you're in costume, ten if you're not. Well, I got money. That's all right. That's okay. You can swing by and see what it's like. Yeah, well, yeah maybe not. Yeah. yeah. I saw that too. I'm like, I want to go, but I would love to. You know, the mind is willing, but the body is weak. Yeah, I mean, I've been up all night. See you later, Bob. I was what up a all quality last dude. night working. That's one quality yeah. dude right there. Yeah, man. I was up all last it's night. It's like you are. You're a quality dude too. Yeah, I was up all last night working.